Hi Virgo, is reading for the sign of Virgo. So this reading could resonate with anyone who has Virgo strongly in their chart, such as Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Hope you enjoy it as well, my friends. And let's get going. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that you're here. And let's see what's here for, for the sign of Virgo. Virgo's energy. <clears throat> and your exterior world, the environment around you, the situation around you, situation around Virgo. we're good put these over here for now and let's look at what energies you're in what energies you're in Virgo well we have you here in the hanged man next to the lovers energy next to the three of Pentacles so I think for your this is your internal energy or this is the this is how you're feeling um, you have something here that you're learning. There's something here that you're learning with a hangman. There has been a pause here and this pause has really helped you see something in a different way. It, there, there could be an epiphany here or just a new realization about life with a hangman. I think this has been somewhat of a fun period of time for you, Virgo. For, for some of you, I really feel like um, it's it's something that you're enjoying doing. The, the reason I say that is when I get into the energy of this card, I find like a um, some enjoyment here. And it might even surprise you a little bit that you're enjoying this kind of a process. It might not be something that you would typically enjoy, but because of this, there's something here in this in this light this here that's somewhat enjoyable for you for some reason and i'm not saying that it is like that for everyone but there there is a group of you that that somehow this is somewhat enjoyable and i don't mean like a huge enjoyment either i'm just meaning that there's some something here that is somewhat enjoyable about the hangman and that's really kind of a rare energy to feel so there's something here that's i, I here i'm going to say it one more time but there's something here that you're it's like you're doing this stretch. And what do they call this kind of exercise? I've always wanted to do that. So it seems like it would be just so fun to do this kind of an exercise where you're hanging on the material and you can do twists and turns in it. There's something you're enjoying about the stretching. Um, stretching, stretching of the mind or stretching of the muscles or stretching of time, stretching of your capacities. There's some sort of enjoyment of the stretching. I do think um, with the lover's energy, this is um, really putting you into balance. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the lover's energy in an internal way, um, this is with your yin energy and your yang energy coming into balance. So um, the time that you take to, to take care of yourself, to sleep, to really dig into what you believe in, to eat foods that are healthy for the yin, um, to be able to cleanse, cleanse the body, maybe during certain types of the, times of the month. Um, or um, at different times of, no, well, certain times of the month um, for the feminine energies or for the females out there, you know what I mean by that. Um, you can cleanse that energy during that time of the month. Um, but but there is a, a balancing act between the yin, how you feed your yin, how you feed your feminine energy, but then how you can also um, help your yang energy move forward in a masculine way, how you can start to take action and, and make changes in your exterior world, make changes in your life. And when the yin and when the feminine energy is satisfied and when it's healthy and when you've eaten the food that will help nourish you and when you've taken the time to rest and when you've taken the time to really look into the reasons why. Why do I believe this? Why do I want to do this? 
Um, how am I feeling about this, right? When you, when you build that basic foundation, then the yang energy or the masculine energy can move forward and things can begin to happen in your life. So I see that this balancing is happening here for you. With the three of pentacles, this is something that you might have been working on for some time. Um, there, there is, um, with the three of pentacles, again, there is an enjoyment with the three of pentacles. There is an industrious energy. Um, I think you know that finding this balance and finding this enlightenment and, and stretching these muscles muscles of whether they're the body or the mind or the heart or whatever you're stretching here, um, there is something that you've been working on. And I think that it's something that you enjoy working on. Um, it, you know that it's going to bring you abundance. You know that it's going to bring you success in your outer world. So um, this is a group of Virgos who've been doing some inside work. Inside work is being done for this group of Virgos. Um, and I think you're feeling positive about it and you're feeling aligned and, and balanced and you're beginning to move forward in such a smooth way. It's so smooth, Virgo. It's how I'm feeling about this. Could have taken a while to get here and it could have been created by some sort of a pause or a delay that was put into your life that kind of created this, um, this, this, this set the stage for this kind of inside work to be, to be really, um, to gain speed and to, to gain velocity. So let's look at what's happening in your outside world and the environment around you. The Empress, beautiful. Yeah, I felt that. Definitely, I felt that, Virgo. Ten of Pentacles, see? The Sun, oh my gosh. Well, no wonder. Seven of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune. Aren't these cards beautiful? Damn, Virgo. Well, we have the Empress energy. That's definitely you um, in this very empowered feminine energy um, where you have this passion for life. Um, you have the clarity on who you are and, and where you're going and what you believe in. Uh, you have this uh, practicality that helps you step forward in your world, in, in, your, in, in your real life to do the things that need to get done. And then you have this abundant love, this copious amount of love that you have within you, that you are um, showing it to yourself in the care that you give yourself. And you're also nourishing the people and the animals and the plants that are around you every day, whether it's your children, whether it's your co-workers, your family and friends, your community, you're in this very nourishing and inclusive energy. And what I mean by that with the Empress energy, uh, and this is something that's kind of coming out um, in, in a couple of other readings too, um, is this maternal energy that not only spans the energy of your children and your family, but also there's an energy of inclusiveness for other people where there's a lack of competition, where there is a enjoyment and a appreciation of other feminine energies around you and other masculine energies around you. So that um, this is a period of time where you're going to really not see the competition where you used to feel insecure. You used to feel competition from different people. I don't think it's going to really, it's going to, it's not going to ping you anymore. It's not going to, it's, it's not going to affect how you think anymore, what you do anymore. Um, and if, when you're in the Empress energy, it, it might have been like this for a while. But there, there is a group of you that are going through a change now where you are gaining this um, in-depth value of yourself so that you no longer are affected um, by people that have been around you or situations that have been around you that have caused insecurity with you. You don't have that insecurity anymore. You understand um, who you are. You understand what your empowerment is. You understand your natural abilities and your skills. You understand how beautiful you are in your own way, right? It doesn't even have to be a mainstream way. It doesn't have to be the way everybody else is, but you're realizing that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and in all personalities. That what That's what makes beauty is the variance of it, is the, is, are the, are, is the diversity of it. That's what creates beauty. And so I think that you're realizing now who you are and um, you're, you're gaining this empressy kind of energy about other females around you, other males around you, and, and just beginning to just, uh, and when I get in this energy, it's like, I want the best for everyone. You know, I want this to be a win-win situation. I want this world to be a win-win world, right? It's a very empowered feminine energy. <clears throat> and right next to it, we have the 10 of pentacles. 
And next to that, we have the sun, right? So there is a situation here that's really stabilizing for you. This is about happy family, feeling protected, feeling secure financially, um, feel, feeling like there can be enjoyment of life now, that, that, that the worry that you've had and the stress that you have can kind of melt away because there's something here that's coming in for you that brings in this energy of peace, enjoyment of life, um, a partnership with other people or, or a spouse that, that is safe and secure. And you can really just enjoy yourself now in your own natural habitat. Um, this is about family. This is about legacy. Um, this is about having um, freedom in life, but also having family around us um, to help shelter us, money around us to help shelter us. It's, it's like the Four of Wands energy, but much more secure, much more long lasting. It's like the Four of Wands 20 years down the road. It's still the Four of Wands. Now it's the Ten of Pentacles, right? It's a long term. It, it's There is a lot of confidence now in your family or in your workplace or with your finances. It's confidence. And that confidence comes from some sort of evidence. Now, the Ten of Pentacles can also be a perspective or a feeling. So each of us can identify with the Ten of Pentacles differently. For some of us, let's say somebody who is um, um, in, a, in a different demographic or, or has a different size bank account. So you could, you could have someone who... Um, let, let's say there, there's a, a, a millionaire kind of person, a person that might have five or $10 million of assets. Um, his idea of the Ten of Pentacles would be completely different than somebody who has $25,000 in the bank or $5,000 in the bank or $1,000 in the bank. It, de it depends on where you have come from. If you have come from having $20 in the bank and now you have $5,000 in the bank, you're going to feel the Ten of Pentacles. If you have $5 million in the bank and and you have a long-term plan where that money will keep increasing by 7 8% every year, or even 4% every year, and you know that in 10 years you can retire and you can spend, I don't know, $120,000 a year um, every year for the rest of your life and you'll be okay, that could be this millionaire's 10 of Pentacles, right? So I just took it to, to, to both extremes. But that's what I mean with the 10 of Pentacles being sometimes a feeling, a feeling of security and safety. Um, rather than a, a certain dollar amount. So whatever you're doing here, I think you're starting to feel safe and secure now, Virgo, in your home, in your money, in your family life, with the legacy that you will leave. It's a big, secure, long-term kind of feeling, the Ten of Pentacles. Next to the sun, I mean, I mean, this is an outlook that is so positive, a mindset that's empowering. Um, a way of living that's inclusive and, and positive and optimistic. I mean, there even could be wealth here. There could be um, real success here coming in for you with the sun energy. Whatever it is, is pure happiness, is pure joy, is pure power, is empowerment, is something that's super exciting and, and um, uplifting for you, Virgo. So I'm not sure what's happening here for you, but there is something really beautiful popping off. Um, we do have the Seven of Swords with the Wheel of Fortune. So this is coming um, to a group of people who have been through um, a pretty crappy experience, you know, my, my language, but a pretty crappy experience here with the Seven of Swords. There has been something that happens, that has happened now that has moved that situation past you and you're getting your balance back. You're stepping back into your safety and security. You're feeling good about life. You're feeling better about life than you've ever felt before. Um, there could have been something here that came in that that created a change in what you believed in. It created a change in what you understood about life. It created a change possibly in um, your strategic planning of the future. Something happened here, and I think it was uh, somewhat painful. The Seven of Swords is one of the most miserable energies that, that is in the Tarot. So there was something here that came in. It could have been a major betrayal or it could have been um, somebody taking something from you. Somebody could have taken something from you or something was major was lost because somebody else encroached or someone did something to you that wasn't fair. It's This is something that sometimes takes a while to get over the Seven of Swords. But what the Seven of Swords does do is it pushes you into change. It pushes you into change that maybe you were... Um, avoiding or you were in denial about this um, and it's something here has come true it's painful it's hard to take it can confuse the mind and it can really 
um, it, can, it can really hurt the heart and can it diminish your energetic body. So whatever's happened here, it looks like there's new movement now. That period of time is over. Lessons have been learned and you've moved on now with the Wheel of Fortune. There could even be some sort of bonus coming in here for you or some kind of improvement in finances that's coming in here for you. We do have the Ten of Pentacles. Um, we have the three of pentacles. We have the sun energy. We have the empress. There's a, th this is a group of Virgo people who are making a comeback and feeling damn good about it as well. And understanding where you've been and where you are now. And there's a gratefulness here with the sun, isn't there? There's a gratefulness in this, um, in this transmission that's coming in for you. There's a real gratefulness and a reverence and an appreciation here. So whatever happened with the Seven of Swords, it really took it out from under you. And it looks like you've had to re resettle yourself, rebalance yourself, and rebuild yourself. And now once you've done that, it's it's like a new version of yourself that's coming in here. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. All right, let's dig down here and see what else is in this story. Sorry, I realize my tripod is, is moving. Let's dig down and, and let's look at this Ten of Pentacles and see what's here with this Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. More information on the Ten of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Look at all these Pentacles. It's just so interesting. Strength energy. So we have the seven of pentacles, the six of pentacles, and the strength energy. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. So that so it's gaining in power. It's gaining in, in momentum here is what's happening with this ten of pentacles. It looks like you there's something here that you're working on. Um, whether it's something at work or a relationship, it's something that you're investing time into. You could be investing money into it for the seven of pentacles. You could be investing money into it. You could be investing time. You could just be waiting. The Seven of Pentacles is a waiting game as well. So you could have invested. You could have already worked on this. You could be in a relationship right now where you're just um, spending time getting to know each other. Or you could be working on a project or in a job or something where you're getting, you're, you're spending time training for it or investing money into it, investing time and materials into it. Um, and you're waiting for it to come into harvest, right? You're waiting for the harvest time. You're waiting for something to, to move into fruition here. Uh, I think you're, you're hopeful. Um, you're, you're not losing sight of it. You're staying watchful about it. And you know, at some point it's going to bear fruit for you in some way or another. Um, whatever this is with connected in with the 10 of pentacles. Now you have the six of pentacles. So there could be funding here. There could be, um, money's coming in to help you with this. There could be a partnership here that's that's safe and secure and fair. Um, you could be looking um, to exchange something with someone else with a Six of Pentacles, something that's fair, exchange resources, exchange, exchange manpower, um, exchange. The, the word exchange comes out here. So this, is, this must ring true for you because that's not a, a, a phrase that typically comes out for the Six of Pentacles. An exchange of something, exchange of resource, exchange of feelings. Um, there's some sort of an exchange energy here as well with the Ten of Pentacles. And then we have the strength energy, which is Leo. Look how the strength energy is over the top of the sun. So I, I do think that um, th this does have an energy around it that will um, that will require you to have a, a certain patience, a gentleness around this. Um, I, I, with the seven of pentacles, it can get a little bit, um, frustrating to wait. So usually with the seven of pentacles, there is an urgency that you feel inside. Um, you can't really do anything about it on the outside, but you feel it on the inside, um, with this, with this, with the seven of pentacles. Um, this eight, the, the strength energy is over the top of the sun. So you could be feeling pretty excited about this. You could be feeling like you're raring to go. You're ready, raring to get going. Um, that you, something, maybe this funding is coming in or something here with the word funding keeps coming out, funding, funding a project or, or getting funds to do something, getting money to do something, exchanging resources for money, exchanging work for money or something, something about getting this money. And you could be feeling pretty inspired by it, excited by it. And, um, it, it will maybe perhaps take 
a little bit of effort for you to not move fast in a spontaneous way to 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 be um careful in what you say and the actions that you take so that it doesn't jeopardize um all the good work that's being done or all the effort that's being made so um there could be like this overall energy of intensity and and over the next couple of weeks you might have to really moderate your tone or you might realize it's it's important for you to not let the sun and the ten of pentacles energy and the safety and the security that you feel um, become so strong that you're losing touch with how other people feel or what other people think like um because there's a real safe and secure feeling and a, and a real feeling of empowerment sometimes with this ten of pentacles in the sun we might feel like we know more than someone else or we might feel like we've been successful in something and we might become opinionated with the strength over the top. So I think there's just a gentling in the energy of how we speak to others, um, how we express ourselves to others, but I don't see it being any kind of a problem here. It's just such a strong energy and it's such a beautiful period of time for you, Virgo. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the sun energy. King of Swords. So there could be Aquarius, Libra, Gemini here. Five of Cups. Seven of Wands. See, there could be there could be someone here that's that's feeling differently or going through a different kind of situation. But it's King of Swords could be you as well. But I think this could be a different person. This could be a person around you um, who is going through a different kind of uh, an experience. Now, this person, now, if this is you, then you know it's you. And you can just say, okay, yeah, that's me. That's what I'm going through. Um, I'm going to read this King of Swords as a, as a different person, um, just because I think for some of you, it is a different person that's around you. Um, we, we do have a King of Swords here. Now, this King of Swords would be um, a, a different kind of a thinker, a very eccentric thinker, might be very different from a lot of people. Um, this is someone who does a lot of thinking and um, maybe not a whole lot of speaking because the, the Queen of Swords is the one that speaks a lot and does a lot of talking. The King of Swords is much more quiet. Um, he is very fair. He's very logical about things. He can really overcome um, other people's... If somebody has something to say that is different from how he or she believes with the King of of um, swords this person can understand that even though this person may not have the same experience as you do or the same knowledge as you do um, this person can understand how you feel they they're logical so they usually don't get hurt feelings they usually able to overcome um, differences of opinion or differences of thoughts differences of beliefs um, now this person is is sitting in the five of cups energy so there's something here that this person is really sad about um, that's why I think it's a different person because these energies are so different. Um, this person is sad about something that's happened in the past. Um, this person could have regrets. This person could be feeling lonely. Um, this person could um, be working to get over this, be working to strengthen um, with the King of Swords. I do feel like with the, with the seven, of, uh, seven of Wands, this person is working on their own personal boundaries. Um, having their own opinions, having their own belief systems. So this person could be separate from you in the way the both of you think. You could be one type of thinker and this person is, is another type of thinker. Um, this person is someone who is very in tune with themselves, um, is very um, connected in with energy and, and really can feel when um, something isn't right with around them. They're, they're very intuitive that way. Um, they're, they're a strong self-advocate now. They, they are learning how to represent themselves and their belief systems and how, and, and what they think and what they want to spend their time doing. The Seven of Wands is a very defensive energy or self-representation energy or self-advocacy energy. So that tells me that there's something in this person's experience that is, um, that is causing them to defend themselves, to protect themselves. So they're in a protective type energy here. Um, they're sad. Uh, they're in a protective type energy. It almost makes me think that someone might have um, 
done something to them or they may feel that someone has done something to them um, that has really quite hurt them, um, very quite hurt them in the past. It does look like this person is a single person. This person is very independent, um, self-reliant, doesn't really need anything from anyone, um, has a lot of personal strength. Um, but even people that are strong, even people that are single, even people that have inner strength can feel emotionally sad, emotionally drained, could feel lonely in their experience. And um, even though they might have connection here with with their inner self, they could have boundaries put in place, they could still feel quite alone. So I do feel like this King of Swords is someone here around you who is experiencing something um, where they might have a different perspective than you or might think differently than you. Um, it might just be going through a completely different experience. So that's interesting that that person comes forward. Let's look... Um, Let's look now with the with, uh, um, Seven of Swords energy and see if we can get more information with the Seven of Swords. Something here that just took away all your enjoyment in life, took away all your happiness, all your enjoyment in life here went away. Um, there was a major surprise that you had to deal with here, some kind of catastrophe that came in and just really... Um, just really affected the way you thought about life and, and affected your stability. Um, it took away all the joy in life. It really was hard on you, Virgo. Um, we do see you here recovering now. You have more passion. You might be different than you were before, Virgo. You might have a new youthfulness. It's almost like you've got a new lease on life or um, you, have a, you have a new bounce in your step after this trauma that came in here for you. Now, this could have been a month ago. It could have been a year ago. It could have been I don't know, 18 months ago, um, and it looks like you're recovering now and feeling better than ever, feeling good again after a very long period of time, feeling good about yourself, um, feeling energized. Um, you could have spent some time here healing and, and um, resting, and now you're feeling better about your situation. This, is in the, this whole reading is really happening in the next um, week to two weeks. All right, let's look at the Wheel of Fortune and see what's going on here with the Wheel of Fortune. Page of Pentacles. The Fool. And the Nine of Swords. So, I mean, I, I really think that you have a um, new stability coming in here. Um, I think that you are feeling new and refreshed. Um, let me dig a little deeper into this. Tell me more about this fool energy. Tell me more about this fool. I'm going to move these cards over. But remember, I'm clarifying the Wheel of Fortune. That's what I'm clarifying now. Tell me more about this fool energy. Here's the Queen of Swords. Now, there's that King and Queen of Swords here. energy could be connected to that other person. Um, this other person might be deciding now um, to do something different or making a different choice or, or going a different direction, this Queen of Swords. This Queen of Swords could be quite intimidating. It might be hard to talk with the Queen of Swords. Um, the Queen of Swords is in protection of herself or of people that need help. Um, this could be you, Virgo. You could be um, in this Queen of Swords energy, feeling differently about a situation, um, feeling more stable, feeling more grounded in life, and feeling um, much more empowered about your own life and, and your own situation here with the Wheel of Fortune. So it looks like you have a maybe a little bit of a different perspective in this situation with the Seven of Swords. Whatever happened here with the Seven of Swords, I think it really pushed you into the deep dark. And when you came back out, there's something happened where you feel fresh and new and you, you feel um, just different about your own life, different about the way you see things. 
Um, there might be even, you might even feel like there is a new life here. Um, and I think with the Queen of Swords, you could be fairly intimidating. You could be feeling um, quite strong. Um, you could be feeling protective about a person or people in your life. Um, you could be feeling very protective about the, the, the King of Swords that was, that showed up earlier. Um, this could be a partner to you. This could be a spouse. This could, this King of Swords could be a daughter or a son or a work partner or a lover. But here you are in the Queen of Swords. That tells me that there is a, a counterpart energy here. I, I do feel like you are, um, contemplating here a different way of going about this or a different way of thinking about this situation. Um, this is the wheel of fortune now that we, that we're looking at. And you could even be communicating about this to someone. You can be quite busy in life, going here and there, communicating with a lot of different people, feeling young and youthful and ready to do whatever needs to be done. With the Six of Pentacles, I do think that there is balance here. There, there is um, a realization that there, there is equality here. And you could be working to make sure that it's equal. You could be even defending someone with the Queen of Pentacles or the Queen of Swords um, and, and realizing that you're going to think about this another way, a, a different way. You're going to act a, a different way here or you're thinking about it anyway. And you could be communicating. You could be traveling. You could be going back and forth um, with the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is action. It's taking energy and exp and moving energy to a different place, whether that's in communication, in travel, in, in just being very busy in life. Uh, and then we have the Six of Pentacles, this balance, this equality. So whatever is going on here, that there there is new momentum now, new conversations taking place, new relationships being built, new success coming in. It is connected in with this Queen of Swords. There is a um, life path decision or a strategy decision that is being made here with this Wheel of Fortune. Now, this Wheel of Fortune um, could be in a couple of weeks. I do feel like it's the last energy. So you're feeling this um, this this beautiful, empowered energy, and um, you're realizing here what's happened. And then by the time we get to this end of this two weeks or end of this one week, um, you're you're continuing to move forward with this. You're continuing to move forward. And it looks like you're moving into some sort of a decision of how to do something or which way to go with something. It's very positive energy. Um, it's it's a it's very expressive. It's it's communicative. Um, it is a protective energy. So you are working and, and saying things to protect yourself or to, to represent other people or to represent, um, another person. Um, and so these are very strong energies. This wheel of fortune is going to be a good wheel of fortune for you, Virgo. It's going to be good. It's not going to be hurtful. Um, uh, from, from what I can see, these are all good energies that we have here. All good energies that we have here with the wheel of fortune. All right, let's see if there's anything else that I want to dig into, and then I'll move to the extended. I think I'm going to take this out um, a, a month or two, maybe a couple of months, to see what's going to happen in this situation. The fact that we ended it with a wheel tells me that this is going to continue on and things are going to continue to happen. It's interesting that you have the lovers um, within you, so that's really interesting, and you have these very strong energies. It tells me that something is going to continue happening um, in in your in your journey. Uh, because it's like you're fueled up and you're ready to go. So it's quite interesting. Um, so for those of you that are resonating with this, feel free to move into the extended reading. I'm going to take this out farther in the future. I'm going to dig into those energies and see what we can find. Probably through the end of May, early June, or maybe even into the middle of June. And um, we'll just have to see how the energy feels. All right, my friends, I hope that was interesting. I hope you resonated with it. I hope it was comfortable and, and, um, and, and brought confidence in for you. And for those of you that are resonating, if you, if you're interested in the extended, it's the link is in the comment section and also in the information below. All right. Thank you very much for It's always a pleasure to read for you, my friends. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you back on YouTube in another week or so with another update for the sign of Virgo. All right. Thank you.